Hello friends, Tony Howard here, and I'd like to invite you to a new webinar on essential dignities in modern psychological astrology with Karen Hummecker Sontag. And I'm really uh, grateful to have Karen with us today to tell us a little bit about the webinar. Thanks for joining me today, Karen. Thank you. And Karen's a leading astrologer from Holland that I'm sure many of you know. She's been practicing astrology since 1975. She founded two schools in Holland. One's an astrology school and one is a school of Jungian psychology. She's the author of many classic astrology books, including The Foundations of Personality, Psycho Psychological Astrology, The Yod Book, The House Connection, and many others, especially if you're reading in Dutch. She has many books published in Dutch. We were just chatting about a book she wrote on Sedna that, unfortunately for me, is only in Dutch. I would love to read it. Um, maybe someday it'll get translated, but welcome and thanks for joining me, Karen. Can you tell folks a little bit about what you're going to be sharing in, in this webinar? It is about modern uh, essential dignities and it's in modern psychological astrology. And that's absolutely different from what we are used to in classical astrology. I looked at both. And in classical astrology, you have the dignities that have to do with rulerships. Rulerships are on the signs and triplicities, etc. But in modern psychological astrology, a different system developed. And that different system looks at where does a planet feel best? So you look at the planet, not at the person. So it's not about you experiencing that, that planet, but it's about how does the planet feel? And the planet, of course, feels best in its own sign. But it can also feel very happy in another sign where it's exalted. And it's always a sign where he gets an extra quality that helps him. So sometimes it's better to have an exalted planet than a planet in its own sign. And there, is, there are also signs where a planet does not feel well for himself. It takes more pain and more effort to become who he is. And the classical example, of course, is Mars in Libra. That if you have that fiery, energetic Mars that that is thinking uh, last and doing first, so he's going ahead, and then it's the Libra sign that says to Mars, "Wait a minute, take care of others, please. Look at other people." Well, Mars doesn't want to do that, so Mars's energy is inhibited in Libra. So Mars does not feel well in Libra. He is losing his his original quality in the beginning and he he, he can proceed with, with developing that quality but it's difficult for him so from the perspective of the planet it's called a bad placement and it's called a bad placement in classical astrology but the problem is that people who have that placement in their chart can have excellent qualities um, with with this placement they have their own psychological positive qualities. So it does not tell you something about the person. It's about the planet. So you cannot judge a person. And what you see is that planet gets a different quality. And the example I always give is, for example, Nelson Mandela, who had Mars in Libra. And uh, he, he didn't want to fight directly. And always he said, we did it together. And one of the qualities of Mars in Libra is that when he wants to fight, he's first looking around and looking, do you want to join me? Do you want to join me? Do it together. And also fighting by being nice is also something that people with Mars in Libra do. And that's also what Nelson Mandela said. He was so polite and nice when he was in prison uh, for his gardens. Uh, he was so nice to them. And even in a way that the other prisoners said to him, you're way too nice and you're way too kind for them. And they actually saw that they, he was he was actually cheating them, being too nice and cheating the, the other prisoners. And then Nelson Mandela said, no. If I'm if I stay nice to them and I stay kind, I show them that I still see them as a human being. So I force them to see me as a human being also. That's the fighting of Mars there. So this is an example of how a, a, a planet in a sign where he doesn't like to be can be a tremendous positive quality for the person, but not for the planet.
And what I want to show is how the difference is between the person experiencing something and how the planet experiences something. But if you really need a fighting Mars, then Mars in Aries, of course, is much better than Mars in Libra. And so if you are in a situation that you have to put yourself on the foreground, then if you have a Mars in Libra trying to Jupiter, you can still put yourself a bit in the foreground, but never that well than when you have Mars, for example, in Aries trying to Jupiter. So you can start to see why a Mars trying Jupiter in the one chart is not that provocative as Mars trying Jupiter in the other chart. And so what I want to show is that the same aspect doesn't work in a similar way in all the charts. You have to take into account how a planet feels, but you must always make a distinction that if a planet doesn't feel well, you as an owner of that position can feel great with it and it can be a talent. And that's what I want to show. And I want to give some examples. I want to elaborate on that. This is great and really timely given that as a community, we're all very interested in a lot of these ancient texts that are being translated and available yes. for the first time. And there's a big interest in, in classical uh, and ancient astrological teachings uh, that focus on essential dignity. So we're talking about words that you may have heard of if you're relatively new to astrology, like fall or detriment or as Karen was saying, exaltation and also planets in rulership. So if these topics interest you and you're looking for some ideas about how to bring those concepts into your modern practice, this uh, webinar would be really great for you. Um, Karen, can you just let people know just to set up expectations? You know, I know in, an, in a 90 minute presentation, you won't have time to go through every possible configuration. So is your intention to just share a few compelling examples so that people have a place to start thinking about these these uh, this yes, theory? I will, well, I will give the theory. And that's that's concise. That's not it, it's not difficult. Uh, so I will give the theory, and I will give examples, and I will show you how to be non-judgmental, and then we can look at some of the examples from the students themselves. Great, that sounds wonderful. There is another thing that I I would like to say because what I found is that there can be a planet that can be so dominant because of its position and then position in sign, house and aspect that it, it has a maximum quality. And in Holland, we call it the maximum planet uh, or you can call it, uh, you, you can give it another name, but we call it maximum planet. And um, if if you see that planet, you, not everybody has that, but if you have that planet in your chart, that planet is going to be very uh important for your character and for your development. And it can be a planet that is contrary to the rest of your chart. And I can give an example of my own chart. I, I am a Sagittarius with sun in the ninth house and a sun queen comes to Jupiter and some other Jupiter stuff. So that's actually a, a combination that wants to be totally free and wants to do whatever. And what I see is I'm always full of obligations, working very hard, sticking to schedules, etc. Well, Saturn is my maximum planet. And there he is. So we are all also going to look, uh, does your chart have a maximum planet? And what does that mean for your character? So there are two things, all belonging to the topic of the modern, modern essential dignities. And that is, how does a planet feel? And do you have a maximum planet? Beautiful. I can't wait. Well, thanks so much for putting this together for us. And if you're interested in this topic before we present it live in 2022, you can head over to astrologyuniversity.com forward slash events to look at our event calendar and register there uh, for this webinar. And if you're watching this video after it's been recorded, you can get the recording by heading over to Astrology University and finding Karen's speaker page by just typing her name into the search field of any page of the web website and you'll find her speaker category in this webinar. Again, it's called Essential Dignities in Modern Psychological Astrology. So you could look it up that way as well. Well, thanks for joining me today to tell folks a little bit about what to expect. It's great to have you. And uh, I'll, I look forward to seeing you again really soon, Karen. Glad to be here. Thank you.